everyone welcome back to my channel for this vlog it is very interesting because I'm going to share um, my story about my sex change reassignment surgery SRS disclaimer only um, I'm not a doctor I'm just going to share my story and my opinion and my experience about my sex reassignment surgery or sex change SRS surgery going to share my experience about my um, operation and who's my doctor how much is the cost how expensive I'm going to share a lot of details about my sex change and how's my life now living as a woman and being a transgender so and also my advice but first I have my photos here and going to share some of the photos from the past when I was in the hospital for the surgery in Thailand and also here in the Philippines Please check this out. When it comes to SRS exchange surgery, there's two common technique. The, which is mine is the common one, the normal and the classic one is the penil inversion technique. And then the other one is the colon graft technique, which is um, more getting popular now. But a little bit more complicated to do, but I think it's also better. Anyway, I'm happy and satisfied to my result. So just so you know everyone, I'm a transgender woman. I'm a post of transgender for such a long time na. So I I had my surgery, SRS, sex change surgery, I think last 2006. Oh, so that's a long time ago. You do the math, that's many years ago. Like almost 20 years. So it costs a lot of money, millions of pesos. I spent a lot of money and effort and time three times of um, boob job um, breast implants nose neck and then um, sex change I had my first sex change here in the Philippines and a reconstruction or correction to my vagina that was year 2010 So before I proceed and talk about my surgery, I want to give an advice to my sisters, transgender sisters. You have to be mentally, physically, and financially prepared for this surgery. This is not a joke because SRS surgery is irreversible. You cannot bring it back. You really have to think properly and you have to be ready and prepared for this mentally because you don't want to regret your decision kasi nandiyan na yan eh you can't bring it back so you have to be ready mentally ready and be sure that you really want this surgery physically ready of course you have to be strong you have you need strength um eat good food at the same time motivate yourself that you really want this you see yourself in the mirror that you're looking for this and you really want this and it's like a dream that's like a goal and of course financially we have to be financially prepared for this surgery this is a major surgery and this is expensive and when I say expensive, this is, this will cost you thousands of dollars. Well, in other country like in the United States, I think it's more more way expensive. But in Thailand, I think you can have a very good price. Um, in Thailand, in a good doctor, huh? Not in a cheapy cheapy doctor. You have to be financially prepared first. Um, payment for the doctor, um, transportation, medicine. Look for a good doctor with very good reputation and experience. Research about the doctors as your friends. You have to research a lot. You have to think a lot before you decide for the surgery. And look for a doctor, surgeon with a proper 
facility, safe with good service facility. In my experience, um, Dr. Jaime Jorge, he treated me really good. Um, he explained everything to me. And in doctor, and with Dr. Kamal Pansritum in Thailand, he has a very good facility. You know that you're in good hands. This is why if you want to undergo surgery, especially SRS, this is a major surgery operation, exchange reassignment, you have to invest um, money. You have to invest for your body. You have to be prepared financially. Find a doctor with good reputation because we are talking about health here. Safety, sanitation, um, service, and treatment from doctor towards their patient. So we have to think about the doctor. That's very, very important. And I personally do not recommend Dr. Tep. I I think Dr. Tep is very popular in Thailand. I do not recommend that doctor. Especially, of course, um, I worry about the sanitation and cleanliness from his clinic. And also, he's popular because of low price. We have to invest to our body. We have to uh, find a proper doctor, trusted doctor to take care of our body. I've said, um, even before, I always tell to my other transgender sisters, I do not recommend that doctor, Dr. Tep, because um, I don't like the cleanliness, the sanitation, and safety of his clinic. They are a lot of very good, um, well-trusted doctors and well-experienced doctors, surgeons in Thailand and in other countries. So again, piece of advice, find a very good doctor. Um, be prepared mentally, physically, and financially. And, of course, um, think about your decision. Because SRS surgery is irreversible. I had my sex change surgery here in the Philippines. And by the late Dr. Jaime Jorge, he's the father of the sex change SRS surgery here in the Philippines. He is the first doctor to bring um, sex change operation here in the Philippines. Yes, yeah, so I'm one of his babies. And that was 2006, year 2006. And then after that, year 2010, I have um, correction or reconstruction of my sex change um, SRS surgery. I go to Thailand and my doctor for my reconstruction and correction to my vagina is Dr. Kamol, one of the best doctor in Thailand. And that was year 2010. So if you're going to ask me where is better, kung saan mas maganda magpa-opera for SRS, I think it's better to do it in Thailand because they are more advanced and the surgeons in Thailand are more, more way experienced. So the process, procedure for my SRS exchange here in the Philippines, my doctor is Dr. Jaime Jorge. Um, first, consultation to his clinic at Mary Child's Hospital located in Manila. Again, Mary Child's Hospital is an old hospital, but um, it's a good hospital. After the consultation, he scheduled me to go to the Veterans Hospital, I think it's in Quezon City, for my psychiatric and mental health test exam. So I have to pass that exam to able to proceed for the surgery. And luckily, pasado, I passed the exam, um, psychiatric mental examination. So meaning, I'm able to proceed um, for my sex change reassignment surgery. Very simple lang yung mga ano dun ang exam. Simple exam only. Um, they're going to show you um, um, placards and images if you answer it correctly. And also, they have a lot of questions like basic questions about your mental health, about yourself. After I got the result, um, I go back to the clinic of Dr. Hori and then it's scheduled for 
um, the surgery. So, so for the price of Dr. Jaime Jorge, well, he asked me um, 350,000 pesos uh, for the payment of my surgery, sex change reassignment. So in US dollars, it's around 7,000 US dollars. It includes the hospitalization, confinement, the medicines, and the surgery. So, if you're going to combine the price from my, from my first surgery and to my reconstruction, it's around more or less 800,000 pesos. And it's equivalent to around 16,000 US dollars, including everything. So, yeah. Operation day. Of course, medyo nakakatakot that time. I'm a little bit scared. But of course, I'm very young. I want to do everything. I want to pursue the process. And um, I'm very excited at the same time. First, confinement sa hospital, Mary Charles Hospital in Manila. First night, I remember, this was long time ago. This is 2006, okay? So, I remember yung perla. It's a perla soap. It's for washing clothes and stuff, you know. So perla soap and mix it with water. And then, we call it labatiba. They, they put a liquid into my um, anus. And it's like a cleaning. The doctor wants to make sure that my intestines, um, colon, is clean. And to proceed for the SRS surgery. It's like a protocol. And then fasting, 8 hours of fasting. I think more than 8 hours. 8 hours to 10 hours of fasting. So operating room, um, they injected the anesthesia. The anesthesiologist asked me to do the shrimp position as far as I remember. And then they inject a couple of um, injections into my spine, the back. And then the operation was all good and fine, but the only thing that I don't like is that I wake up in the middle of the surgery. But of course, I don't see anything. It's all covered, so may naka-cover sa front ko. So, I, I didn't see anything and I don't feel any pain. It's totally painless um, while in the operating room. And then I asked them, to, oh, please bring me back to sleep. So, kasi nagising ako, I wake up, no? So, nakakaloka. That's traumatizing for me. And then, again, I fall asleep again. And then, I wake up in the recovery room. All is fine. And then, I started to feel the pain. The pain is actually tolerable. But, there were times that, um, a little bit uncomfortable. Because, you know, there's a pain. And, may tube, ha? May nakalagay na tubo. Parang, it's not a tube, parang dilator. There is a tube na naka-insert. It's actually inserted into my new vagina. It's there for days, you know, until I check out of the hospital. So, yon nakalagay yung tube na yon sa vagina ko. And also, I got a catheter uh, for my wee-wee, my pee. It's very lucky that I don't have any complications um, after the surgery. It's just that, of course, there's a pain, but it's tolerable. In general, it's tolerable pain, no? For that seven days, uh, of course, I'm not able to walk. Nakakabuka ka lang. You just have to open your legs. Actually, after the surgery, the first time I saw my vagina, well, it doesn't look good. It looks like a monster. <laughs> but of course, it's part of the healing it's part of the process it's swelling so much a lot of bruises looks red and stuff after weeks of course after weeks and months it looks good little by little slowly it looks really nice i'm very lucky also that i have people to look after me and also at mary child's hospital um the nurses are keep on checking on me they look after me and also my doctor um look after me and there's a pain reliever you have to take some medicines for the pain and also some antibiotic then on the eighth days i think as far as i remember i'm not very sure i think on the eighth day i'm able to go home i got a clearance to go home i stayed at mary Charles hospital for one week and then i have my um uh, i have my family friend to look after me the service was good at mary Charles hospital i recovered quite fine and of course i'm still busy i'm still a bit weak that time and i can only walk very slowly only can walk very slowly and then fortunately my healing process was very good so I at home there is a process of cleaning the vagina so i have to clean it like um twice a day or once a day at home i need to do the dilation dilation it means you have a dilator the 
doctor will give you a dilator it has a size as a like six inches five inches to six inches or seven inches size uh, made of marmol it depends it de to insert that every day it's like a partner already lifetime partner you have to dilate my vagina it's like inserting a dilator because to maintain the depth that's the main purpose of the dilator and dilation to maintain the depth of my vagina sometimes yes i'm lazy to do the dilation but now um i'm able to maintain my depth i do the dilation now um three times a week because sometimes i'm lazy <laughs> recommended dilation actually by my surgeon is every day and last for like five minutes to ten minutes every day is a healing process um after two weeks actually not much pain and first time to pee pee well i was very excited because you know that's my first time to pee pee when i got home and the first time i wee wee i pee pee oh feels like a woman after one month surgery then um i'm able to do things but i'm not allowed to have a um, sex for three months you have to wait until it's properly healed you have to wait until properly healed ha you have to listen to your doctor and follow your doctor so for me um i'm able to have sex um i think um after three months yeah and also i remember that time after a couple of weeks i have to go back to dr jorge for cleaning and check up dr jorge making sure that i feel good as a transgender myself it's a big accomplishment for me and then after months and years i feel great and then i'm able to travel i'm able to enjoy myself as a woman another piece of advice don't try or plan to rush things you know? don't try to rush using your vagina you have to listen to your doctor and follow the instructions was 2010 then I decided to have a reconstruction or correction to my vagina about like a little bit of correction um, because I am not satisfied the outer look of my vagina so I want to have a little bit of correction and to make it more um, better so I decided to contact um, Dr. Kamal in Thailand it was recommended also of my many many friends um, about this doctor. Dr. Kamal Pansuitong is very popular and very highly recommended. Surgeon doctor in Thailand. So I flew to Thailand with my friend because my friend she's going to look after me. After arriving in Thailand, I go to the clinic um, M2F Surgery Clinic of Dr. Kamal Pansuitong. He has a very nice clinic actually that time. This was 2010 but this time I think it's 2023 he got a bigger um, clinic. I think it's like a hospital now. It's more modern and uh, very world-class clinic now. But so then I got a schedule for consultation first at Dr. Kamal's clinic in Bangkok, Thailand. And I'm able to meet him personally too. So I told him what I want to do and what I want to correct. And then also, of course, he take a look at my vagina. And he told me also what he is able to, to do um, to my vagina. And then after the consultation, we agreed. And also he scheduled me for laboratory. And then also it's all clear because the very important, you have to undergo laboratory tests first to make sure that it's all safe and all clear and I'm ready for a surgery. And for the price of reconstruction correction uh, for Dr. Kamal, it's around 5,000 US dollars. 5,000 plus or 5,000 US dollars. So it's around 250,000 pesos plus hotel accommodation, medicines, and also the flight um, expenses. So to total, maybe around 350,000 plus pesos. So if you're going to combine the price from, from my first surgery and to my reconstruction is around more or less 800,000 pesos. 
and it's equivalent to around 16,000 US dollars including everything so yeah so yes yeah, same feeling um I think for this time it's a little bit different because um it's not uh, it's only a, a correction surgery but it's still I feel a little bit nervous and then um, but I know that I'm in a good hands because um Dr. Kamal Panstutung is very friendly he will make you feel that you're in good hands so he's very nice and then actually he explained everything to me the process the day of the surgery, I think it's like general anesthesia. Um, no pain, it's totally painless. Fall asleep very quick and then I wake up in a recovery room and then it's all done. If, as far as I remember, I also had a catheter. At first, it doesn't look good. It looked like a monster at first. But eventually, and uh, after, after a proper healing, it will look good. This time, the healing process was more easy because it's just a correction, reconstruction one. So I left the Kamol Hospital after three days and I stayed in a hotel. So after days staying at hotels, I still have to visit um, Dr. Kamal's clinic for the checkup and the medicine uh, and also final advice from Dr. Kamal Panswitung before I go back to the Philippines. So total, I think as far as I remember, I stayed in Bangkok, Thailand for this reconstruction surgery for 10 days because I want to make sure that the surgery is good and successful, safe and no complications. So oh yes, well, for this journey, I'm a post of transgender for so many years now. And actually, I'm very happy to share my story, especially to my transgender sisters and also to my trans sisters that planning to have a surgery, SRS surgery. And I hope this vlog is kind of helpful and I wish you luck also to your surgery. After so many years, it's 2023. Um, I'm very happy and fortunate that I don't have any problem about my, um, you know, my vagina until this day, until this year. So I'm grateful. Again, thank you for watching this vlog. Well, I think that's enough um, story to share. Um, I hope this vlog was helpful. And again, thank you for watching this vlog. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel and check out my other um, vlogs here and do check out my playlist. Please subscribe to my channel. Please click the notification bell. Again, thank you for watching and see you again to my next vlog. Bye-bye.